Merton had this article in 1968 in which he'd, he'd used the term Matthew effect to describe scientific careers. Herb Wahlberg uh, talked about Matthew effects with respect to achievement in general, okay, um, including educational achievement, um, um, but, but also other um, um, occupational endeavors. Uh, and then I stole the term <laughs> third hand, I guess, from, uh, from Wahlberg and, and used it uh, specifically uh, as a term to model effects that are going on uh, in the reading process itself to embed um, uh, the idea of cumulative advantage and disadvantage effects in, um, in a, a developmental model of reading. Uh, you have uh, well-developed uh, phonemic representations, hence uh, you struggle less uh, with the code, uh, and um, your phonological decoding is good, so you recognize words well very early in your reading experience. If you recognize words very well, you have a lot of capacity left over for the high-level comprehension processes we were just, just talking about. If you have a lot of capacity for those, stories are interesting <laughs> because you're thinking about them, and the stories are interesting, so as well, you read more, uh, and you read more, and you develop more of them those decoding processes, uh, and, and, um, uh, and then interestingly, what I developed in the Matthew effect, Effects paper is even when, um, when uh, let's say, you, 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 you get to further stages of reading where decoding processes are, are uh, asymptoting and, and other types of high-level inferential uh, processes are coming online, well, you have a built-in advantage there because all of this reading you've been doing has been building declarative knowledge. It's been building lexical distinctions. It's been building vocabulary. All of the things that you're going to need, let's say, post-fourth grade uh, as well. Th and this is a particularly important spot. You just went from Matthew Effect into what reading does for the mind as far as reading as a cognitive exercise environment for making the kind of distinctions and critical uh, reflection and extension into uh, vocabulary differentiation and into the world that we just don't do if we don't read. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you, uh, I, I, I titled a paper, you know, does reading make you smarter? Uh, uh, precisely to provoke people to think about this. The conclusion of, of the paper was the answer is yes. If you, if you uh, default to what is pretty much a consensus view um, of, um, of intelligence, certainly there are, there are two really separable domains of intelligence, so-called fluid intelligence, abstract problem solving, and the so-called crystallized intelligence, okay, declarative knowledge, vocabulary, lexical distinctions, um, um, were verbal facility. Now, since the Matthew Effect paper, since some of the work that our group has done, but many other groups on uh, the effects of reading, the effects of exposure to print, uh, crystallized intelligence is just massively built by um, reading itself, okay? independent of education, independent of fluid intelligence, okay? Regardless of what your levels of abstract problem solving are, you build declarative knowledge, you build lexical distinctions uh, with reading, and reading is uniquely efficacious.